on the playground when we were growing up. You might have even said it yourself. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Contest chair, esteemed judges, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests, I give our younger selves credit for being half right. After all, sticks and stones can break your bones. But words, they're a lot more powerful than we gave them credit for. I want you to think of a time when you were praised for doing a job well. Nothing big, just a couple of kind words. Thank you, great job, way to go. Do you remember how that small gesture made you feel? Chances are it lifted you up. Might have even made your day. But not getting that recognition? That can hurt worse than any stick or stone. If you need proof of that, I'd like to introduce you to Jerry Dior. You probably don't recognize Jerry's name, but I'd be willing to bet that you're familiar with his work. Because in 1968, Jerry Dior created this. The Major League Baseball logo. That iconic logo that's beloved by baseball fans everywhere. And it's the model for so many other sports logos, such as the NBA <laughs> logo. It's on billions of dollars of merchandise, too, from caps and jerseys to balls and scorecards. And yes, even those utterly ridiculous <laughs> foam fingers. Hey, we're number one. I had the privilege of knowing Jerry Dior for nearly 40 years. His son Mitch and I were best friends growing up in New Jersey, and we still are today. It seemed like every time I would walk through that front door into their house, I'd look to my right, and there was Jerry in the studio, hunched over his drawing board, designing a cereal box or a gum wrapper. His work was his life, and this logo was his pride and joy which made it so strange when Mitch told me about his dad and the logo. Being a big baseball fan, I was excited. I wanted to hear more. But Mitch told me, don't say a word about it to him. It's a sore spot with him. Oh, OK, sure. I won't say a word. Wait, what? A sore spot? Really? If I had done something that big, you wouldn't have been able to shut me up. <laughs> but it was true. Jerry was harboring a lot of disappointment about that logo. And the reason for the disappointment was because he couldn't get a small gesture for Major League Baseball. He couldn't get credit for rightfully, for, he, sorry. He couldn't get credit for creating that iconic logo. Now to be sure, Jerry didn't want a dime from that logo. The way he described it, he just wanted to be able to tell his friends that he created it and have them believe him. But there was no recognition coming. It wasn't anybody's fault. Jerry was one of a number of artists at, his, at that design firm who submitted logo ideas. The baseball people didn't know who submitted what. They just picked the one they liked the best. And Jerry knew that, of course, but it didn't ease his pain. In fact, he and his wife, Lita, tried to approach Major League Baseball and reason with them, but they were turned away. So life just went on. Jerry continued to work and raise his family. The rest of us continued to tiptoe around the elephant in the room. And as the years passed, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, Jerry's disappointment only deepened. Then a series of fortuitous events changed everything. It starts with a reporter named David Davis, who was researching a story about the history of the NBA logo. It turns out the NBA logo was created by Jerry's old boss from that design firm that he worked at so many years before. And he pointed, and that man pointed Mr. Davis in Jerry's direction because it was Jerry's design that was the inspiration for the logo. Now Jerry is on the phone with a national reporter and it's his wife, Lita, who seizes the opportunity and suggests that Mr. Davis write another story about Jerry and his quest to be recognized by baseball. And that's exactly what David Davis did. The headline read, The Man Behind the Major League Baseball Logo, and it appeared in the Wall Street Journal. 
Now Jerry's quest is gaining momentum. Now the baseball people are taking notice and they're validating his claims. Now Lita, who is so warm and friendly but can also be tenacious and tough, she's negotiating with the baseball people on her husband's behalf. And finally, it happens. In 2009, to mark the 40th anniversary of the logo, Jerry finally gets the recognition that he was looking for, and then some. Not only did Major League Baseball issue a press release naming Jerry as the creator of that logo, but they honored him in ceremonies, first at Yankee Stadium and then at Citi Field. I joined the family for both of those ceremonies, and I saw a Jerry Dior that was relaxed, that was happy, that was finally at peace. In fact, in an interview he did some time later, he said, now that baseball has recognized me, I feel like my story is complete. After 40 years, all it took was an acknowledgement, a thank you, to make things right. William James, considered the father of American psychology, once wrote, the deepest principle in human nature is the craving to be appreciated. The deepest principle in human nature is the craving to be appreciated. Fellow Toastmasters, it only takes a small gesture, just a couple of kind words, to make someone feel appreciated, to lift them up. Make it happen. Use those words sincerely and generously. Make somebody feel appreciated. Make them feel like they matter. Make them feel <laughs> like they're number one. And you know what? You'll feel like you're number one too. Because with that small gesture, you'll have done something big. Contest chair.